I got a question for you. What does this city know about luxury? Huh? What does a town that's been to hell and back know about the finer things in life? Well, I'll tell you. More than most. You see, it's the hottest fires that make the heart of steel. Add hard work and conviction and the know-how that runs generations deep in every last one of us. That's who we are. That's our story. Now, it's probably not the one you've been reading in papers. The one being written by folks who've never even been here. Don't know what we're capable of. Because when it comes to luxury, it's as much about where it's from as who it's for. Now, we're from America, but this isn't New York City, or the Windy City, or Sin City, and we're certainly no one's Emerald City. my jam right so uh how do i turn it off hold up so how do i turn it off i guess i could just kill it so of course this isn't detroit this is cleveland and uh that is a very motivational video that i i think about like probably once a quarter and um, it reminds me that I don't have to be from Redmond, Washington. I don't have to be from Silicon Valley. I don't have to be from Wall Street, right? I don't have to be from Atlanta. I don't have to be from Chicago. I could be built tough, just as good, if not, if not better. Come out of a, a city that's hardened, in a city where it's it's not you know, glitz and glamour. It's not pushing Maseratis and Bentleys. Nah, it's a city where you have to work for everything that you got. It's a city where you have to fight for everything that you have. And this is what has built a lot of us, even though they don't show us in the media and they don't show us, you know, in a lot of places. But sooner or later, they're going to feel it, all right? Anyways, I thought I'd share that with you because every once in a while I need motivation myself. And uh, whenever I watch that video, Detroit is a, a sister city of Cleveland. Maybe it's a big brother city of Cleveland. Detroit's bigger. And it's, uh, it's on the other side of the lake. But um, it's something where I really feel that video, man. It's like you, you could be from the absolute gutter. Right, you could be the, the the laughing joke of of anybody that thinks about Detroit or Cleveland or any Rust Belt city. But you know what? They ain't built like us, right? Where a lot of people buckle, but we keep going, right? And that's why we play on the field while everybody else spectate from the sidelines. So enough evangelizing. Uh, yo, the last couple of videos that I've been doing in this campaign as of like 72 hours I think Ooh, I've been going full throttle and uh big a big thank you for the inspiration of John Sanmez of simple program simple programmer.com really like inspiring me to like go ham right I've been consuming so much I've been consuming so much 
of, of everybody else's content, trying to build myself, trying to prep myself, that um, now I've been doing this for years, that I have never, I, I've given back a little bit, but not on the scale that these people have. And I feel like um, that's pretty selfish. I'm a, I'm a selfish person, but um, maybe it's time that I try to help others. So with that said, I uh, for those that may come from impoverished nations or cities, uh, I used to live in the Philippines, man. So for the elite programmers in Manila out there, the user group I used to run out there, uh, you know, let that be motivation. And uh, it doesn't matter where you're come. It doesn't matter where you're from. It's matter. What matters is how you're built. And uh, I sincerely believe in that. That's what separates us from them. So with that said, enough babbling. Uh, my last post, I was talking about like constructing view models, and uh, me just going full throttle in F sharp, building uh, you know a CRUD application, create, read, update, delete. That is what CRUD stands for. And uh, something that I didn't really talk about, even though I was talking about my discovery of um, whether it's accurate or not, what I've learned, um, my discovery of when to use a module versus when to use a namespace. And I probably didn't articulate it the way that I would like in my last video, but I think I would use modules when I'm dealing with functional, within the functional paradigm. When I'm dealing within the functional paradigm, I would use modules. And uh, I would use namespaces when I'm dealing with the object-oriented mayhem. Like, so, for example, what does that mean? I found that as I go through my code base, I, I see that the view models that I have uh, fleshed out and the repositories that I have fleshed out, um, to me... I, I, I recognize view models and repository uh, objects or classes as as integration points, right? They, they, they're the boundaries, right, of, of my system. They're not the core of my system. The core of my system is, is just functional domain logic, you know, F-sharp stuff. Even though I implemented my, my, my repositories in F-sharp, yeah, my view models too, but I... I I'm beginning to think that um, maybe this is a pattern where your your, your functional logic and your strong typing, um, your, the types that you declare, uh, will be under modules, and the in, the integration uh, infrastructure plumbing is going to be under namespaces. That that's what I have found in my solution. So. For example, can I show my screen? Uh, I wonder if I can show my screen. Hold up. Uh, one screen show on here? No, you can only see. I wish I could expand this. Can I expand this? I can't expand it, so I probably can't show you. Uh, I should be able to expand this, though. Um, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I had put my window of a certain size for that YouTube video, but... Uh, to show an example of, I wonder if I could do this. I'm an engineer. I should be able to do this. So, to show an example of, I know I'm going to butcher this. Yeah, Scott, you're butchering this. Uh, let me get rid of Test Explorer. And I'm doing this. Some repositories that I've built. I'm going to get rid of that too. Oh, good. That, that. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. Maybe I should unpin that. Um, namespace repositories, right? And that is under, if I do Control Alt L, that's a shortcut for displaying my solution explorer. And these are the different uh, repositories that I have. Let's see, feature repository. Yeah, that says feature settings. Yeah, it probably should be an interface like everything else. But you know, I'm doing all this within a small window. Um, 
But I put all my repository interfaces under the namespace repositories. And just like I put all my, my view model classes under the namespace, uh, I thought it was called view models. I'm not sure what it was. No, no, no. Um, under the, 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 the different projects that I had. So I had managed account, managed benefits, um, managed claims, et cetera. And so I had view models that were, that were associated to specific features under those namespaces that represented those features. Um, and to recap on that, if I hit control comma and I say uh, view model, view model, oh, and uh, well, there's a benefits plan view model, right? Manage benefits, that's the name of a project that I have, right? So if I go up here, you see the managed benefits, oh, yo. So, that's all. That's all uh, I wanted to share. I that's what I have recognized as I'm working within F sharp, and I am dealing with a really small window because I noticed that when I was recording um, that inspirational video at full screen, it was slowing down the the, the actual images, and the actual audio wasn't aligning with the images. So that's why I'm struggling to show you my editor within like a quarter size of my screen. <sighs> All right. So what else can I share with you? I, I just discussed um, the repositories that, that I've implemented. Let me go back, I guess. And control Alt L display. Uh, 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 let me put focus on our editor. Control Alt L displays my solution explorer. And uh, I can say uh, control comma, yo, 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 yo. Control comma, and type in repository. Now you spell repository. Re, uh, 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 repository. And, uh, yeah, and that's an example. And maybe I could go into some details about this. So look, learning enough sharp. Let me go back to me. Let me go back to me. All right, learning enough sharp. It's it's, it's actually kind of interesting because I'm noticing that um, whenever I'm interacting with the outside world, it's not it's not guaranteed that I'm going to get the a response right and i think it's fair to assume that and so what, what do i mean by response well let's let's go back to this i benefits repository this this interface for ben getting data associated to benefits you know you get overview you get usage you get coverage you get member get member coverages and get members and all this stuff get last appointment you notice um, I have this option, 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 right? If it's a list, then I can just return an empty list. Or if it's a sequence, I can just return a, an empty sequence. OCD is taking over. All right, it's a line. But honestly, um, what's this benefits usage? Yeah, so honestly, I think it makes sense that for a repository, whenever you're retrieving data, everything should be an option. If it's not, if it doesn't return a sequence or a list, because it's not guaranteed, especially if you did, if you uh, rely on uh, an internet connection, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get data back. You might get a message saying, "Hey, we weren't able to get data." Um, if you're expecting, you know, some some uh, type that that implements I enumerable, then yeah, you can have an empty list or an empty sequence when when we're talking about F sharp, right? You could just return some some brackets that that are completely empty. Um, but if you're expecting a specific record to come back and, and not a list, not a sequence, but a, a record or a, a, a instance of a, of a class, a.k.a. object to come back, um, well, what are you going to do if you can't retrieve that information, you know, uh, over the wire? Well, 
that's where option comes in because you either you have something or you have nothing. Let me go to definition F12. And here's a here's option, right? I hit F12 goes to this definition under namespace F sharp module core. And uh, I don't know. Let me play F12 again. Module option. And uh, you probably don't care about the details of this. But anyway, with the option within F sharp. Let me go back to me. Within an option in F sharp, you either are going to have something or you're going to have nothing. And so that's when you can take advantage of pattern matching within F sharp. And you can say, uh, hey, match on this result. Uh, and, and these are the, the different cases that I am considering as a, as a result of my attempted uh, query. And you know, the first case is I'm going to have something, I'm going to have some result, or my other case is I'm going to have none, okay? And within a repository, you can just return whatever that result was. If, if you didn't get anything back, um, then you just return none. If you got something back, then you return some, and then like the literal word, some. Right, and then you put in the result right next to it, some space, and then whatever uh, whatever record that's associated to it, or whatever um, object that's associated to it, and that makes sense to me. Uh, and so this is an example, right? This is an interface, and for anything that is of a, a record type, we're going to actually return an option of that record type if I set that correctly. If it's a, if it's a list or a sequence, then well we can just return like some some empty um, brackets or whatever. So this shouldn't build because I updated the interface and so now I should be able to make some corrections based on any uh, any classes that implemented that interface. And I'm almost confident that I have a class that implements that interface. So you should give me, uh, it says build fail, right? And so we see this right here. And we should go look, it should be like a mock class. Yeah, I'm stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have this, okay, yeah. We have this benefits usage view model, okay? And this in network usage, it should be uh, the default should be some and that should go away yeah you go away and the same thing with this right if we say some that means that uh, well now that I think about it it probably doesn't make sense to Scott you're so smart now that I think about it yeah we should uh if we're going to give it a default, well, this might be fine, all right? But I would also say, yeah, you could just do this right here, and that's a lot clearer. And on the UI client, we can just do a pattern match. Um, well, in C sharp, there's no pattern matching, in which you know the the UI client is written in C sharp, but we can within our Android activity class, we can basically uh, leverage uh, a method extension that serves as a utility. And we can say, hey, if this view model .in network is sum, then let's go ahead and get that value. And then we can assign the value to you know the, the text of the text box control, right? Um, the same thing with this. So, yeah, that means I get to delete this. Yeah, I get to delete it. Delete. Less code I have, less bugs get to creep up in it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me go back to me. So, yeah, that's, um, that's it, right? That's F sharp. F sharp. And that is me showing an example of a repository that I implemented all by myself. 
and F sharp. I'm really, I'm really getting off on this language, man. And uh, on a side note, and I'll probably pump out a video about what I'm about to say right now, is uh, for people that are new to software development, I know it's overwhelming. I know it's overwhelming. But look, I'm going to encourage you. When you learn, when you learn uh, how to program, this is a perfect opportunity. Listen up, right? Like, give me your ears, right? This is a perfect opportunity for you to make just as much money as as a developer that has 10 years in the game. What do you mean, Scott? I mean, like, dude, within like probably 12 months. Listen to what I'm saying. Within 12 months, you have just as much opportunity to make $100,000, $120,000 a year and compete with someone that's a better. Well, how is that possible? This is how it's possible. All right. Are you listening? I want everybody to be rich, right? Um, at least people that deserve it, people that demonstrate that they should, right? So with that said, not that $100,000 is rich. This is it's nice, right? Um, so this is how you do it. If you're getting into software development and you're like, yo, everybody's light years ahead of me, right? You don't play by their rules, all right? You don't you don't you don't play by their rules, all right? Like you don't follow the herd, all right? Monkeys follow the herd, sheep follow the herd, right? Mm -mm. You gotta be a beast, right? You gotta be a wolf. So what does that mean? What do you mean? You got to be a wolf, right? This is what you do. Listen up, people that are new to this game, people that are new to this industry. You completely bypass. I won't say completely bypass because some some knowledge is, is fair, right? But this is what you do. Skip over object-oriented concepts, all right? The whole C-sharp, Java, JavaScript, nah, nah, dude. Don't, don't even do it, right? It's not important. It's important for uh, integration details, right? Um, when, when you're actually wiring up some some repositories and some UIs, yeah, it's object-oriented. It is, right? It's stateful. It is. That's where object-oriented comes in at. It's stateful, right? But the domain logic, the domain logic, this is where you can get into F-sharp, Scala, Clojure. Lisp, um, Haskell, Elm, right? And this is your opportunity where people like me, right? People like 99% of, of all developers here on planet Earth, all probably 50 million or 100 million of them out of like 7 billion, right? It is, even though like functional programming, I think was introduced in like 1960s, I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm, I think 1960s, that's when Lisp came out. I might be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. This is an opportunity where none of us, or very, very few of us, are masters of functional programming. Very few of us, right? And honestly, functional programming will be the, the next mainstream language probably in about five years, right? So that means you have a 60-month head start, right? Because... I have a year invested on my off hours, mornings and evenings, of, of picking up a functional language, F sharp, and I'm way behind. I'm way behind. They let me know that on Stack Overflow a lot, right? But this is your opportunity. People that are getting into software development to, to for right now, ignore, ignore object-oriented programming. It sucks anyway. It does. It's so error-prone. You got to deal with the exceptions and 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 state being changed um, after you assign an initial value, after you initialize a, a, a value, like, it, it is terrible, right? It, again, it's necessary when you're dealing with the integration details of a system, right? That deals with the outside world, external systems that have to interface with one another. But the domain logic, yo, that's where you can leverage a functional paradigm, right? And that's how you can compete with veterans within this industry that's how you can make more money than someone that has 15 years as an object-oriented programmer that's how you do it you bypass what what is popular right now 
and you attack, you go full throttle and what and what the next generation in programming languages are. There's Scala, there's F sharp, there's Clojure, there's Elm, right? And that's how you do it, right? So yo, it's getting ready to rain. I got I got a chick waiting for me on the beach. I got to handle my business, but I want to help you. It is my duty to start giving back because I've been so selfish. And, yo, I really want you to investigate functional programming. And I want you to, to make like 100,000, 160,000, like within the next 12 months. You have to be dedicated, right? And I'll probably pump out a video about more details about how you can get that done and how you can um, separate yourself from the herd and become an outlier. So that's it. I feel really good about myself because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really helping whoever is listening, all five people. <laughs> so that's what's up. And uh, remember the, the intro that I just showed you, right? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, my name is Scott Nimrod. Employers, I'm available for hire. And uh, you know, I'm a consultant. I can make your shop better, right? I can make your shop compete <laughs> to, to, to be more productive by just throwing me in, inside the shop. I am the catalyst, all right? I am. Uh, I'm a trained software, de software development engineer and test. I'm a trained application developer. I'm a trained software tester, all right? I also have an associate's degree in mainframe programming. That's absolutely useless. But anyway, uh, that's it. Here in Miami Beach, by way of Cleveland, Ohio. Adios. De veo a ratito. Yeah. All right. I'm out.